Welcome back survivors. The ARK sponsored mod program is running once again. But what does that mean for the future of ARK and why should console players not simply brush this aside due to the lack of mods on consoles? This is what I'm here to talk about today because it makes you wonder what is the purpose of Wildcard continuing to financially support mod developers when ARK 1 is supposedly ending? And that is where I believe there is more to come. I know I don't have much hope for seeing ARK 2 much before the end of the year, but I still have a lot of hope for the future of ARK 1, believe it or not. Now I'll come on to why console players should keep hope in just a moment, but first of all I've got to say that I've seen many people claiming that content on ARK 1 is done. That the Rhiney Ognather is the last creature to come to ARK 1, it's the last piece of content, and that the UE5 upgrade will simply be that, an upgrade and nothing else. Well, unless I've missed something, and please do correct me if I'm wrong, at no point have the developers said that the recent creature vote is the last creature to come. This creature vote has actually shown how many people are still interested in getting new dinos and content to the original game. And I am certain that there is more content planned due to what I'm going to be covering in this video. Now I've seen a number of people say that they believe the introduction of UE5, the Unreal 5 engine upgrade to ARK could open the possibility of mods on consoles. And I constantly see people disregarding this notion instantly. And in all honesty, I wouldn't do that. There is a plausible possibility that stuff like this or stuff similar to this could happen because Unreal Engine 5 will open numerous opportunities for wildcard and nothing should really be ruled out at this stage. And I don't think it should just be seen as a facelift. This is why I always say whenever anyone asks me about the development of Arc Mobile for example, don't rule it out, because we've seen it time and time again with the Switch, the Survival of the Fittest, and now Arc UE5. The unexpected continues to happen, and I don't see that ending just yet. And I'll come on to why this sponsored mod program is a very positive sign for the future of Arc 1 in just a moment. The upcoming roadmap, everyone is waiting for it. Hopefully it's coming in a week, but it should be here by the end of March at the latest. And it could very well contain some surprises. I've been saying that for a few days now, it could contain surprises in regards to the whole ARC franchise. I know some may think it will just be some dates for the upcoming projects, but I just feel there will be more than that on it. I am very optimistic about this, so console players should keep a keen interest because nothing should be ruled out at the moment. But the fact that the developers are continuing to run the sponsored mod program for ARK 1 when it's coming to an end before ARK 2 comes out and therefore financially support a number of mod developers to continue developing their mods show that wildcards still have a lot of interest in mods for ARK 1. If there was no new official mods coming to the base game across all platforms through this program, or no possibility of mods coming to consoles or anything like that, then what do Wildcard or even the players really gain by Wildcard continuing to financially support mod developers for Arc 1? And this is the question that always brings me back around the possibilities of more ARK 1 surprises in store, which could potentially be revealed in the upcoming roadmap. But what should we expect from this mod program that's running now? Well, as always, anything that enters the mod program is not necessarily destined to come to the base game. There is always a possibility, but nothing is guaranteed. The program is there to support financially the developer of the mods to continue its development, with a possibility that it could become officially integrated into ARK. We've seen this happen numerous times before with all of the previous mods being mapped, with the slight exception of Structures Plus, which saw like about 5% or something of its mod integrated into the base game. It wasn't really that much of it. 
Currently there are a handful of mods in the program, albeit the page on the official website is a bit out of date as it only shows Arc Nucleus, Arc Genomes, Alemia and Cosplay Evolved along with still listing Fyodor which we already have in the game. There is of course Arc Editions currently in the program as well which was added to the program earlier in the year and any new ones that get submitted in this latest round of submissions will appear on this page at some point. But again, that doesn't mean any of these are coming to all platforms under the program. I have been seeing people ask when Arc Editions is coming to consoles, but there is no guarantee that's actually going to happen. So there's got to be reasons why the devs continue to financially support mod developers on Arc 1. And I think it's going to be interesting to find out what they may be. I'm personally expecting the sponsored mod program to move over to Arc 2 once Arc 2 is out. But for it to still be continuing at this late stage for Arc 1, there's got to be more reasons. So what type of mod would you want made official in this current stage of the program? Have you had enough of new maps? Would you want something a bit different? Let me know in the comments below. And survivors, if you don't want to miss out on all the latest art news, make sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.